Right, the first word I would like you to write, and then... Get up, John. Oh, I've taught you well. To do a J, let's make sure we get this correct. You start at the top, and you come down, and loop up there. Lift and dot. Capital is a bit different. First of all, you come down, curve, lift, and then cross at the top. J a u e j a u e j a u e j a u e j a u e j a u e. Yes. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Good girl, Max. Nice box. <gasps> so why do you like this picture so much? Because it's from China. And why do you like China so much? Because it's kind of pretty. And it's where you're from. Yeah. So it's, it's close to your heart. Do you know what this is called? Wong Pi. Wong Yuan. I think so. And it's all E. Yuan. Yuan. Well, it might look heavy, but it's not heavy. And I like it because it has a lip on it. It just brings you love every time you look at it. Oh. Can you see any connections between, say, myself and Maggie about what we had in our boxes? Pardon? Yes, love. I've got my wife. I've got my babies. Baby. I've got my, my family, haven't I? And my cat. I did babies because the cat's there. Yes, because I forgot to put it in last time. I forgot to put the cat in. There, yeah, so there's a lot of love in my box and there's a lot of love in Maggie's box. So that's a connection. Thank you for sharing because that was very nice. Good morning and thank you again for joining us today. My name is Claire Lind or Miss Claire to the students. Something you might have noticed from our introduction to the academic team is that we refer to teachers by their first name along with their title, which is a little unusual. I was one of the founding teachers at Fairview Bridge of Allen joining the school last year after relocating from teaching internationally for nine years. So I was delighted to find a school in Scotland that was international and IB. And today I'll be telling you a little bit more about our primary years programme or the PYP. So the PYP covers students from age five to 11 or year one to year six. So the Scottish equivalent of that would be primary one to primary six. Primary seven falls into the MYP, which Mr. Nye will tell you a little bit more about shortly. And one of the key factors in the IB is that it is a concept-based approach. It is the focus on teaching students skills so that we are preparing them for their future in an ever-changing world. The students we are teaching now will most likely have jobs that do not yet exist. And therefore, it's really important that the, the concepts we teach them, combined with that learner profile, give them the transferable skills to be successful in their future. So I will now show you an example of what a day or a week in the life of a PYP student looks like. So we begin our day at 8.30 with a 10 minute homeroom slot. 
and you will then see our lessons run in doubles. So each one is 40 minutes, so they have 80 minutes at a time. And then we have two breaks and a lunch. Now I have to give the lunch time a special mention because whenever we have tours or taster days, the first thing that the, the current students want to tell everybody about is how fabulous the lunches are. Our chef, Miss Marie, can transform the most fussiest eaters. So if you're interested in coming to our school, you, you'll be in for a treat there. And the school day then finishes at 3.10 and Mr and I will tell you a little bit more about what happens after school. So homeroom time in the morning and UOI, English and Maths are all delivered by what we call a homeroom teacher. And that is just the equivalent to a class teacher because we have a few more specialists. So the year three, four homeroom teacher is Mrs Kate and she will deliver their morning homeroom times, which is a bit of pastoral time and those subjects. We then have specialist teachers who you saw earlier for art, Mandarin, music and PE. So one of the subjects there that might sound a little different to you if you are not familiar with the IB is that UOI unit of inquiry. And those are the statements or the questions that are the focal point for our learning each half term. So we have six units of inquiry across the year and we then link our learning to that. So each week we have a collaborative planning meeting with all of the teachers where we discuss the learning and look for ways that we can make those really powerful links across the subject. So the specialist teachers can find ways to link to the homeroom, but also we can really make use of having those specialist teachers within our school. So you will see here on the left hand side a picture, a little bit gruesome for this time in the morning, but that lesson came from a collaborative planning meeting where Mrs Kate was discussing her year three, four learning about, they were inquiring into understanding body systems to help people make responsible choices. And Dr Lorna then highlighted that she could bring in some real life lungs and do a lesson with the students where they could learn about that and really give that deepening of the learning there. Now, our units of inquiry are also really student led. It's incredibly important within the IB that we are developing that lifelong learning within our students, that passion to deepen their learning. And so at the start of each unit of inquiry, we will ask the students what they want to learn. Unlike you might find in other curricula where you have a set of objectives that you must cover and therefore the, the lessons are pre-planned, we ask the students what we want to learn and we then tailor and personalise the learning to really meet their needs and make sure we are engaging them in their learning journey. So in each classroom, we have something called a wonder wall where the students' questions are posted and they can add to that at any time. Questioning is something that we really, really encourage. And we will then make sure throughout the weeks that we are covering those questions so that we are really developing that passion for learning in our students. We also will give students options so that they can highlight their learning in ways that are comfortable to them while also taking risks. So, for example, on the right hand side here, you will see a photograph of actually something that Hazel mentioned earlier. We didn't actually pre-plan that. However, one of her highlights that she shared was the celebrations assembly. Now, that was actually an end of unit assessment. So assessments for us are not booklets that we sit down and complete. We look for innovative ways for the students to showcase their learning in a way that makes them feel proud and they are taking that ownership over their learning. So here the students actually chose to put on an assembly for the whole school where there was three stations sharing three different celebrations. They chose which one they had learned about that they wanted to showcase and they had to use all of their different skills to put this on so it involved maths so that they could include timings. As Hazel said, they were involving maths to do a purchase proposal. So they asked me if they could have some money to buy some resources. And I then shared with them the same way that myself as a teacher or any member of our school community, if we were to put in a purchase for a resource, we would complete the De Bono Six Hats Thinking Proposal. And the students then had the option if they wanted to go through that process, they all chose to do that. And our finance officer then returned it to them in the same way again that we would. And this really, really deepened the learning to the students and gave it that real life context that stuck with them. And at the end of the year, when they reflected back on their learning, that was a real highlight for them. Next, we're going to look at an example of a unit of inquiry and how we really make those deep and meaningful connections. 
So first year you will see the transdisciplinary theme sharing the planet. We have six transdisciplinary themes that run each year. So every class across the primary years programme will have one of their units of inquiry under that umbrella of sharing the planet. However, we make sure that the central ideas and lines of inquiry change each year to ensure there is that depth and breadth of learning to prevent what can happen in other curricula where you might find that in science, for example, a topic like plants can be quite overdone. You might find primary two and primary four, for example, doing something very similar. So here our central idea was human activities have impacts on ecosystems. Now this was actually one of our units we ended up doing during lockdown. And so some of the activities we did here was, for example, going into the garden or going to a local park and finding plants and then labelling the parts that we had been learning about. You'll see a picture here of a student who had dissected one of those flowers. We also looked at symmetry to bring in some maths links. We went to our kitchens and looked for foods that had came from plants and then that led on to learning about food miles. And in English, we studied the text One Plastic Bag, which is about Isa 2CC. Those of you familiar with climate change research will, I'm sure, know of her. And that story was set in Gambia. So before reading the text, we had to research Gambia and find out as much as we could about that country. Now, at the end of our unit, one of our pieces of work was that we were then going to, similar to the Isa 2 CC story, write our own fictional story, but it would be set in a real country that we didn't know a lot about, so we would research that beforehand. And two of our students, Liam and Mikey, decided to go further with that research project, and they actually used Zoom, which I know most of us didn't know about before lockdown, to interview Liam's auntie, who had frequently visited Tanzania. They interviewed her to get as much information as they could to include in their story. So that really highlighted that inquirer learner profile there. Another excellent end to our unit was Hazel, who you met earlier, com completed a TED Talk, which was part of our end of unit assessment, a TED Talk style presentation, where she used the rubric, which is our criteria we use to assess, to really plan her assessment piece and make sure she was taking that learning further. And in her TED talk about human impact on ecosystems, she made the link of how COVID was going to negatively impact our environment with the single use plastic bags that were then being used by supermarkets again, all of the PPE and masks, which we now are more aware of. But at that point in COVID, that was actually quite an innovative idea and it really highlighted that knowledgeable and inquirer aspect. Finally, the picture here of Lewis holding his iPad is an example of how the students take action. So we teach through the inquiry cycle in our lessons and our units. And the final part of the inquiry cycle is taking action. We want to instill in students that intrinsic motivation to take action and take their learning further. And here Lewis applied for the Green Blue Peter badge, which linked to being an eco warrior. And for that, he had to highlight the ways he had contributed to helping our environment. So he brought in that and explained the process to the students who then the rest of the class actually went and wrote their own letter and applied following the learning we had done and they also achieved that green blue Peter badge. So hopefully that has given you a bit more information about our units of inquiry. Next we will look at a subject you will be more familiar with, maths. So maths we absolutely link wherever we can to our units of inquiry. However, there are elements of maths that link more easily. So for example, in that celebrations assembly we spoke about earlier, we were using time to time our sections. We had to do money ratios. However, we make sure that those links are never made at the detriment to the subject content. So we do teach particularly in the upper PYP maths as standalone lessons where needed. However, we will always contextualize that learning to give it a deeper meaning for the students and we focus on the using and applying of those skills so they can see where they can take that math learning beyond the classroom. However, we do make sure that we do still have that rigour within the maths subject. Next, we will look at languages. Now, being a communicator is one of our learner profile attributes and it is a really integral part of being an IB student. The ability to communicate in a variety of modes and in more than one language is essential in the IB. And the language we learn at Fairview International is Mandarin at the moment. Because Mandarin is actually the second most commonly spoken language in the world and the most common language spoken by native speakers. So it's a really useful language to learn. However, it can appear to be quite a tricky language. So to show you how much can be achieved. We now have a short video from one of our students. 
Yin Zil Ho, Yin Zil Ho, Pal De Qua, Pal De Qua, Yes Mi Eto, Yes Mi Mi Ba, Sen Ti Qua, Sen Ti Qua. Now that video was of Ayla who joined us for the third term last year during lockdown and she completed that video at the end of only two weeks with us. So within two weeks she had already learned that. So I know as adults we can have a preconceived notion of things like that being very challenging but our Mandarin teacher Miss Lucina certainly makes the, the lessons very fun for the students and the, the progress is absolutely fantastic. And finally today, I'm going to share with you our, one of our favourite parts of the IB, and that is the celebration of learning. So within the PYP, at the end of each unit of inquiry, which coincides with the half terms, we will invite you in to celebrate the learning of your child and all of the children within the PYP. And that will involve parents, grandparents coming into school, and the students will do some performances and presentations across the curricula. So they might have a performance in Mandarin, in music, and then there will be a presentation of some kind linking to their unit of inquiry. So you will be able to enjoy your own child presentation, but also see that of the others within their class. Afterwards, you and your child will then go through what we call their portfolio. And this showcases their work from that half term. The students select the work that they would like included, and you will go through that with them and discuss it. So it really, really gives you an integral part in their learning journey. We're very much at fear of you have a community approach and we want the, the staff, the parents and the children all to be working together. So as you go through the work, they will share with you their self and peer assessments, their rubrics so you can discuss together their performance, what they did really well and what their next steps and their targets are so you can be supporting that at home. You will also during this have a chance to look around the classroom at the learning environment as we very much have a thematic approach and we change our learning displays each half term to showcase all of the learning that has been achieved. So this is another really great way for you as parents to see what has been completed. We also have reports at the end of each unit of inquiry. You will get a report sent home so you're really kept in the loop of your students progress. And at the end of the first term, you will have a parents evening. At the end of the year though, there's another excellent opportunity for that student-led ownership over their learning where we have something called a three-way conference, similar to a parents evening, but this time the students are involved and they actually quite often will lead that where we look at their learning across the year. So I hope that has given you a bit more insight into our primary years programme. And now I'll leave you with a day in the life of a PYP student. Today we're going to introduce our new unit of inquiry, okay? And I'm going to stick this up on our board, okay? This is our new central idea, okay? Our central idea is cultural heritage and family characteristics can shape one's personal identity. Today I have a box. In my box I've got lots of things. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the things in the box. I'm not going to tell you anything and you guys are going to try and find out three things about me. So think about what cultural heritage we were talking about. Maybe something to do with Scotland, maybe something to do with where you're from, family characteristics. Is your family similar? Are they different? Okay, what do they have? And my and personal identity and what makes me who I am. What can you tell me about my cultural heritage? So where I'm from. My family characteristics and what about my personal identity? What do you know about me from what you've seen in the box? Victor. I did live in Shetland, so I was born here and brought up here. I lived until I was 17 here, and then I moved to university in Edinburgh. 
Everybody in Shetland thinks their ancestors were Vikings. Uh, we have a big Viking celebration every year called Up Helia. Can you say it? Up Helia. Up We celebrate it by dressing up as Vikings. Okay. And we build a Viking uh, longship. Okay, like that. They build it every year and every year they burn it down. Throughout this unit, we're going to be looking into your cultural heritage, your family characteristics, and your personal identity, okay? And we're gonna start building up a box or a scrapbook of things that is important to your family, okay, and yourself. 